In this video, I'm going to talk about the design of lightning protection systems, and I'll show you how to use the lightning protection module in the Safe Grid Earthing software. The design of lightning protection systems, or LPS for short, for structures involves placement of air terminals and down conductors, specifying earthing systems, conductor sizing, and material selection. An LPS is installed to intercept lightning stroke currents based on the probability of their magnitude. Air terminals are used to intercept lightning flashes. Their effectiveness relies on where they are positioned on structures, so that the desired protection level can be achieved. An air terminal may consist of a vertical rod, raised horizontal conductor, or parts of the structure that are naturally conductive, such as metal roofs. The rolling sphere method, or RSM for short, is used for positioning the dedicated air terminals and checking the adequacy of any natural components used as air terminals. The principle of the rolling sphere method is that a sphere of radius R is rolled up and over the total structure, and any surface that is in contact with the sphere is prone to lightning strikes. Therefore, for an installation containing vulnerable equipment, the only points which should remain in contact with the rolling sphere is an air terminal or the ground itself. The standard IEC 62305 defines four lightning protection levels, with different levels of interception efficiency, and provides the sphere radius for use with RSM. Note the following limitations of the rolling sphere method. Firstly, since RSM makes no allowance of electric field intensification at the edges and corners of structures, then air terminals should be placed at these vulnerable locations anyway. Secondly, the RSM is conservative for protecting large flat roofs, so double the sphere radius can be used for the placement of air terminals in this case. Typically, air terminals are mounted on masts or on structures to protect underlying equipment from direct lightning strikes. As can be seen on screen, for a single mast, the protected zone extends away from the mast and provides protection up to a certain height at a certain distance away. The protected zones of two or more masts will interact if the masts are placed close enough to one another. Note that the protective zone for the left and right masts as shown here on screen is identical to that of a single mast, and that only between the masts is the protective zone altered. If multiple masts are in proximity to each other, then the protective zone, which is in three dimensions, can be difficult to visualize, but also to calculate. There are simple equations for determining the protective zone provided by up to four masts, but only when they are evenly spaced and at the same heights. Specialized software tools, such as in SafeGrid, are required for analyzing the protected zones where interactions with multiple air terminals or masts are involved. Shield wires are also commonly used for protecting structures from direct lightning strikes, and they provide a protected zone between the support points as shown. The lightning protection module in SafeGrid Earthing software allows you to perform accurate calculations by overlaying lightning protection systems, including air terminals, masts, and shield wires, onto a scaled PDF site drawing, which you will import as a background image. Using the rolling sphere method, the lightning protection module calculates the protected zones based on factors such as mast heights and their locations, as well as protection level and equipment heights. To access this module, go to the add-ons dropdown and select the lightning protection module. I will now show an example of using the lightning protection module to protect the equipment in a 220 kilovolt switchyard. Once the module has appeared, you can upload a PDF drawing by clicking on the Load New button. For this example, we are going to use a schematic for a 220 kilovolt switchyard. You can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel, and you can use the pan tool to move the schematic around. The lightning protection module provides the option of selecting your desired protection level, ranging from level 1, 20 meter radius, to level 4, 60 meter radius. 
A custom rolling sphere radius can also be entered under the user defined option in the radius dropdown box. It is common to consider that protection level 3 using a sphere radius of 45 meters provides standard protection. Lightning protection levels 1 and 2 with a sphere radius of 20 meters and 30 meters respectively provides higher degrees of protection and therefore these protection levels will require a considerably greater number of air terminals. You need to set the scale of the background drawing using the set scale button. You will need to measure and enter the known length of an object in the background drawing, which will scale the model. When considering your zones of protection, it is necessary to establish the maximum height of the equipment being protected by the LPS. In the drawing being shown, the area of the switchyard on the left requires protection from direct lightning strikes, where the maximum height of the equipment in this area is 10.5 meters. The elevation drawing shown here indicates the maximum equipment height of 10.5 meters corresponds with the height of the 220 kilovolt bus bar. The equipment will be protected with a series of standalone 21.5 meter high lightning masts and air terminals mounted on the edge of the building, which have an overall height above ground level of 17.5 meters. The heights of the equipment can be input into the top right hand corner of the lightning protection module. You can select the number of equipment heights by clicking on the up and down arrow keys. Up to three heights can be set. Each equipment height is input in meters. For the 220 kilovolt substation example, an equipment height of 10.5 meters is given. Therefore, I will set one height at 10.5 meters. It's now time to add masts and set their positions. The diagram currently shown on screen shows various purple boxes which represent the positions for the air terminals that make up the lightning protection system. You should select the protection level you wish to use to cover your structure. For this example, we're going to use a protection level of 2. Once this is done, click the Add Mast button. This will bring up a small window where you can define the mast height which is a combination of the structure height and the air terminal height. Each mast can be selected by clicking the left mouse button and the masts can be moved into position using the mouse. The table currently displayed on screen shows each of the wires and masts used for this substation example. To extend the area of protection, earth wires can be added by selecting the add wire button, where you can choose the wire's origin and destination based on the lightning mast numbers. When pressing the edit wire button, you can also define the percentage of sag for the wire. If the sag is unknown, it's a good idea to add a sag of 5% if you wish to be conservative. Once the mast, wire heights, and locations are specified, you can press the calculate button and SafeGrid will perform 3D rolling sphere analysis. Once the calculations are completed, the protected areas will be shown. In this case, the substation equipment within the blue shaded area will be protected up to a maximum height of 10.5 meters. To save the overlay results, click the save button. This will save the results as an XML file. After calculating the area of protection, you can generate a report by clicking the report button in the top left hand corner. This will produce an image of the schematic, including your overlay and equipment height. The second page will produce the lightning mast data, displaying the heights and positions. Wire data will also be displayed showing the origin and destination of the wire, including sag percentage. Thank you for watching. 
If you'd like to learn more about the SafeGrid software, please visit elec.com.au.